fascinating. You, you can just see these new ways of managing population health and the questions and answers that these new uh, innovations are able to uh, enable. Uh, I'm pleased now to welcome Victoria Foster, Community Initiatives Coordinator from the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, who will present the Community Health Dashboard. Hi, Datapalooza. Hey. So I wanted to start with a quote by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It is indeed the only thing that ever has. So we're here at Datapalooza as part of this mission to change the world, or at the very least, improve health outcomes. Our challenge at the Department of Health has been to find a way to use data to help people change their behavior and help them feel empowered to take ownership of their health. So at the Department of Health, we actually have an access to a great amount of data. Um, unfortunately, we still have trouble translating this data in effectively into the community setting. So what I'm about to show you is not our interface. <laughs> this is what we use at the Department of Health to take a look at what's happening in the community. Um, it comes from our community health survey, which is about self-reported health outcomes. And uh, it's on our website. Anybody technically has access to it. So you can take a look by neighborhood. We're looking at um, self-reported diagnosis of blood pressure. So for instance, in Jamaica, Queens, you can see that this is a high-risk neighborhood. Um, you can click on each neighborhood and see the prevalence of uh, a diagnosis of high blood pressure. Additionally, you can take a look um, at each neighborhood in a table form as well. And while this is a great level of specificity in some ways, because um, it's much more detailed than uh, the, the county health uh, rankings, it's 34 United Hospital Fund neighborhoods, um, this data is rarely actually used in the community setting. In other words, the story that is told um, is about people that don't have access to this data. So this inspired us to build a tool uh, that would allow small groups of people to better answer the question, how is our health? And our first challenge was to ask ourselves how these groups would get this information. Um, simultaneously, we have been rolling out a blood pressure, um, uh, a blood pressure uh, intervention in 44 churches around New York City. So this entails lay health workers, which can be anybody, people that are involved in the health ministries at churches, um, and they're volunteers, and they voluntarily uh, track and record blood pressure uh, measurements within the community. So these measurements are currently being tracked on a paper card. This is what you can see above. And there's a lot of great information here. You can take your blood pressure measurements in the evening, the morning. You can talk about what your goal blood pressure is. Um, unfortunately, this is what the cards look like. They get folded up and they get locked away in a file cabinet. Literally, this data is locked away. It is not able to be used in any significant way other than to check in maybe bi-monthly, monthly with the people um, that are participating in this program. So we began to ask ourselves, how, what would we do to make this data more useful for the community? We enlisted the help of two vendors, Dacia, who's responsible for housing the data, and NextJ, who rendered the data uh, accessible to users. Together, we designed a very simple community dashboard and a personal health record for the purpose of tracking these blood pressures. So we took five Brooklyn churches to pilot these interfaces, and these churches are um, really in high-risk neighborhoods for blood pressure outcomes. So the program's been running uh, up and running for a couple months, and it's definitely still evolving. So let's take a look. So this is what the personal health record looks like. Um, this is Dacia. There's a lot of extras that come along with it. Um, but the thing we've really been using is the health tracker, which then should <laughs> hopefully <laughs> lead you in. Well, it's not right now. But it leads you into a personal health record where you can take a look. You can enter your data. Um, so let's say that you're at the church, you get your blood pressure read, you enter your blood pressure in, and you can track chronologically over time what's happening with your blood pressure. Um, additionally, if you're out and you're monitoring your blood pressure at a pharmacy, you can uh, enter 
you know, you can log in at home on your phone, you can enter your blood pressures there as well. So um, the other part of this is the community dashboard, which also isn't working. I'm glad you guys are getting to see the login page. <laughs> um, but it's really exciting when you can actually log in. So uh, what happens here is the administrator at the church and the lay health workers will have access to logging in each piece, each blood pressure measurement that's taken. And there's several ways you can look at it. You can look at it in terms of groups. So for instance, if a church has a, group, a walking group or a Zumba group, you can take a look at what's happening within each of these groups. You can get a sense of are these interventions working properly? Or are there some interventions that are more successful? The data is all sortable by mean arterial blood pressure, which um, allows you to take a look at which it, individuals need targeted outreach, which individuals are really struggling, and who's succeeding, and maybe talking to them about why they're able to control their blood pressures. Finally, you can take a look at group data, both chronologically over time, so you can you know, look at the ranges. You can say, OK, 20% of our congregation right now is uncontrolled. And since we've um, implemented a healthy cooking class, we've gotten it down to 15%. Um, so really, this is helping with targeted outreach. It's allowing these community-based uh, organizations, faith-based organizations, to take a look at what's happening, not only as a group, but individually. At the moment, uh, we have 131 people enrolled across our five churches, and we're still evolving and building. We're using feedback from our stakeholders to change these interfaces and make them better. So here at the Department of Health, we plan to evaluate the pilot using the RE-AIM framework, which addresses reach, effectiveness, adoption, implementation, and maintenance. We really hope to take a look at not only are we collecting this data, are people using it, but is it really practical? Is it really user friendly? Is this something that people can look at with ease and understand what's happening with themselves? Our specific goals are for a greater, are for a greater ability for community volunteers to conduct targeted outreach, to look at who really needs the extra support. Also greater ability for uh, community-based leaders to track trends, not only in individuals, but within the community and whole, as a whole. And a greater ability for members to share readings taken within the community setting that they can then, provide, uh, can then uh, share with their prim primary care providers so that there is an interface and interaction that is not currently happening between health interventions in the community and uh, in, with their providers. So it's our challenge to really take this local data to help the support uh, the churches to perform targeted outreach. Finally, we would really like to empower each of these organizations to look at the health of their community and benchmark it against what's happening within their neighborhoods and New York City at large. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy Data Palooza.